This is ABC 15 Mornings. A major scene developing overnight, a fatal crash and a suspect on the run. Everything we know so far straight ahead. Also, if you're looking to get out this weekend, there are a lot of things going on around the valley. So we have you covered this morning with a look at some of the biggest events. Plus, our sports teams gearing up for a big weekend. We've got everything that you need to know before kickoff. But first, we start you off with this live view of Tempe Town Lake this morning. Boy, that just looks like a postcard, doesn't it? Except that it's animated with the with the water there shining. But a couple of those clouds going to make for a gorgeous sunrise this morning. We're still about 15 minutes away from that. Cooler temperatures. There's a change in the air, folks, and I am here for it. We say good morning to you. Glad you're kicking your weekend off with us. I'm Nohelani Graf. And I'm Mark Thompson. And yes, as you start to mention some of those overnight lows in the 70s, mm -hmm. starting to get excited because we know this is time of year where we come out of hibernation yeah, and go have fun in the sun while everybody else is trying to get Exactly. Indoors to avoid the cold. So. We're finally not yeah. sweating it out. This is when That's we right. slowly start to step into our bragging rights mm -hmm. season. So it starts with getting out of those triple digits, and that does begin this weekend. Highs in the upper 90s today and tomorrow. Also, you notice those clouds in that live shot. We do have storm chances at play in the forecast. 30% chance of isolated storms here in the valley today. Tomorrow we look to dry out, but then the breezes will start picking up. Phoenix Sky Harbor sitting at 86 degrees right now. He Humidity is still pretty low, so it is comfortable out there. If you are going to take the dog for a walk, oh man, take the long route this morning because we're going to linger in the 80s for quite some time. It's going to take us clear through 11 o'clock this morning to make our way into the 90s. And with that cloud cover, it is going to stay nice. If you're headed up to the high country, you will likely encounter rain up there, but temperatures will certainly be cooler in the low 70s. So I'm going to go over the rest of that statewide forecast and time out those rain chances for you in that full most accurate forecast this morning. No, hey, thank you. Breaking overnight. One person was killed in a hit and run. This taking place around 1130 on the loop 202 at Kyrene Road. DPS telling us two vehicles were involved in this. A woman driving one car. She was pronounced dead at the scene. Witnesses telling officers that they saw a man from the other car run from the scene. Currently, we are investigating this as a crime. It's a crash of the hit run, potentially um, manslaughter charges, depending on what happened with the collision reconstruction, things we do in the back end with the detectives, but it is an active scene we're working on trying to find uh, our person who left the scene. And we want to take a live look at that scene right now. It looks like the eastbound is now moving the roadway, opening back up uh, just about an hour ago. An arrest has been made in the shooting death of a Valley tow truck driver, and it came on the same day as his funeral. Earlier this month, police found 31 year old Devani Corona shot inside his truck near 35th Avenue in Buckeye, and he later died at the hospital. The suspect identified as Luis Garcia. The Phoenix PD say in June, Garcia and Corona got into an argument involving gun yard, gunfire at the tow yard. Garcia is accused of stealing from the business. Now, now, no arrests were made at that time, but court documents show Garcia threatened Corona's life over text messages in the week leading up to that shooting. Yesterday, Corona was laid to rest by his family. Lo amamos con todo nuestro corazón. Siempre fue mi héroe y mi guardián. Y hasta la fecha lo sigue siendo. His family calling him their hero and their guardian. The family says they do take comfort in knowing justice has been served with Garcia behind bars. And even though Garcia is facing a murder charge, he is still denying involvement in Corona's death. Corona is survived by his wife and three young children. One of two men accused of killing four people in Wisconsin has turned himself into Gilbert police. The mugshot of Antoine Suggs released last night. Police say the 38-year-old had been on the run ever since four people were found shot to death in an abandoned SUV in Dunn County, Wisconsin. Police say Suggs has been living in the Phoenix area and had recently traveled to Wisconsin. He'll now be extradited back to that state. 
Now we want to get to a police shooting outside a Chandler Hotel. Officers wounding a man after they say that man opened fire at them first. This happened at the Hyatt Place Hotel on Friday right near Chandler Fashion Center. Police were called to that area for reports of a domestic dispute, and that is when they found the man hiding in a car. Investigators say he raised a gun and fired officers, then shooting back and hitting him. And we're now learning of a string of school threats leading to charges in the valley. Mesa police say that a 15 year old at Dobson High School threatened to shoot up the school on Friday and at Red Mountain High School, a brief lockdown when a 14 year old girl made a bomb threat. Mesa police say that in both cases, these were empty threats, but the consequences, they're very real. Both face criminal charges, one a felony, Officials say that parents need to be aware of what their children are doing on social media. Parents, you have a huge responsibility when you have kids. You need to talk to your kids about responsible social media posting. Mesa Public Schools says that both students are facing uh, potential suspensions or expulsions. Feeling ready to return to work, Maricopa County Attorney Alistair Adele is now out of rehab and set to return to the office on Monday. Adele saying she's now back at home spending time with her family. She had been receiving inpatient treatment at an out of state facility addressing concerns with alcohol use and anxiety. She had been in rehab since August 29th. Now Adele releasing a statement that reads in part, quote, I continue to make my recovery a priority, but have been cleared by my medical team to return to work. The outpouring of support has been a wonderful reminder that there is so much goodness in this community. Now to the new developments in the Arizona election audit. The Maricopa County Board of Supervisors and the State Senate reaching a settlement which ends the legal battle over the county's computer routers and logs. As part of that deal, the county picks up the $2.8 million tab to replace election machines, which officials say can't be used after auditors took control of them. In turn, the Senate will drop their subpoena in which they sought the county's network logs. Instead, an independent group of IT experts will review those logs and answer any questions. With all the challenges, challenges that we faced and the doubts in other people's minds about this, uh, find, trying to find a way that we can answer those questions in a, in a reasonable, secure manner, uh, I think that we found that solution with this agreement. So I'm very pleased. Well, the final report from Cyber Ninjas is expected to be made public coming up next Friday. Happening today, a right wing protest will happen in Washington, D.C., linked to the January 6th riots. This is a live look at our nation's capital this morning. What you can't see in this shot is that fences are back up surrounding that property this morning as police prepare. Members of extremist groups, Oath Keepers and the Proud Boys will all be there. They're set to protest arrests in connection to the insurrection. The events organizers have said repeatedly it won't be violent, but still authorities say they are ready. Also happening today, the Inspiration4 crew expected back on Earth. Their capsule is expected to splash down around 4 p.m. Mountain Time. They'll land in the Atlantic Ocean just off the coast of Florida. And we are seeing some new pictures this morning of that crew enjoying their time <laughs> in space. While all civilians now, we are really making progress when it comes to getting more folks in space. All right, it's a big weekend from all of our sports teams across the valley. Everything that you need to know before kickoff, we've got that coming up straight ahead. But first, honoring our state's Hispanic history, we take an inside look at a new exhibit and its celebration of our state's only Hispanic governor. Welcome back everybody now to Hispanic Heritage Month and a new way to honor Arizona's first and only Hispanic governor. Our Liliana Soto shows us the inspiring legacy of Arizona's Raul Castro. Raul Castro was an immigrant from Cananea, Sonora, Mexico, who overcame so many barriers. A 
after graduating from NAU, no one would hire him as a teacher because of his heritage, so he became a farm worker, a boxer, and eventually... Former governor of Arizona, Raul Castro. The first and only Mexican-American to occupy this position. As a Mexican immigrant, Castro faced discrimination, but seeing the treatment of other migrants motivated him to become a lawyer. He was also the first Latino elected as Pima County attorney, a judge, a diplomat in Latin America. He came as ambassador to El Salvador after being governor of Arizona. He devoted himself on the weekends to help the underprivileged. He went to help the farm workers and the fincas for the coffee, rice, and so forth. He was a trailblazer, the true example that anything is possible, but above all, a great father. He teach you to be humble and kind and value everybody's opinion. And a great uncle. He was really inspirational person and he really believed in education. He was proud of being the first Mexican-American governor, but in life he expressed disappointment at the fact that no other Latino has been a governor of the state since he was elected in 1974. He would go to schools, the minority schools, and give little speeches to kids as young as kindergartners to tell them, look at me, I came from nothing, you all can do the same thing. Liliana Soto for uh, that report. Thank you so much. The exhibit is open to the public until the end of the month, and we've got details for you at abc15.com. No, hey, just a fantastic story. I've been learning so much with all these pieces that we've been putting together for Hispanic Heritage Month. Yeah, really understanding the state that we now call home. I absolutely love it. And you know what? The weather is certainly conducive this weekend. If you want to get out and about and go check out some of those uh, events that are happening and some of the displays as well, we are trending down. Finally, catching a break from that extreme heat that we've had this summer. But we also are not done with the monsoon yet, and we do still have some storm chances at play. 30% chance of rain in the forecast today. Our air quality is in the moderate range, but be mindful that even when the sun is out, we do still have that high UV index. So we're starting off in the low 80s both days today and tomorrow by noon. We're in the mid 90s and then today we warm into the upper 90s. 98 is that high tomorrow. It'll be 99 degrees and then we start dropping pretty rapidly by eight. We're back down in the low 90s back into the 80s overnight. Our temperatures right now across the state. It's a chilly start in the high country this morning. We're in the 50s in Flagstaff as well as Window Rocks. Make sure you got those jackets out before you step out the door. It's also cooler in Sholo this morning. 61 degrees. We're in the 60s in Payson and Prescott, but already at 70 degrees in Sedona. Across the valley, we've got some 70s out there as well. We're sitting at 77 in Apache Junction and Fountain Hills. 78 in Chandler. 79 in Surprise. Wickenburg is down to 73 degrees this morning. So it is a gorgeous start to the day with some of that cloud cover just kind of giving you those fall feels because the first day of fall is right around the corner here by midweek. Our highs today will still be warm. We're going to be in the upper 90s. It's hard to call it hot when we've been, you know, to 118 and back, but it's still it's still very warm out there. So 98 degrees is that high in Mesa and Tempe, 99 in Chandler, 97 in Levine and Peoria. Anthem is going to stay in the mid 90s as well as Cave Creek today. Across the state, we'll see 90s to our south, low 90s in Globe and Casa Grande at 94. We'll hit triple digits in Yuma and Lake Havasu City and come close to that in Bullhead City. Further inland, we're staying in the 70s in Prescott, so that might be a great day trip to go for a hike today. We'll be in the 80s in Payson and Sedona and north of the rim, 70s stretching from the Grand Canyon through Heber. Sholo will make it into the 80s today. If you want to go up to the Grand Canyon, we'll be in the 70s through the weekend, but know that it is going to be breezier up there, so make sure you've got a good jacket handy because we will have sunny conditions, but you know that wind, it has a bite there. Across the northern portion of the state, 5 to 10 miles an hour, with gusts up to 25 miles an hour, while our breezes stay light right around 5 to 10 miles an hour here in the valley. Now, Futurecast showing us those rain chances start through the lower Colorado River Valley and portions of Mojave County this morning. Then it tracks to our north, so isolated storm chances in areas like Flagstaff, Winslow, and Window Rock. Payson could see a stray shower. That also is going to start to push up from the south and here in the valley, so we have rain chances in effect most likely between 2 and 4 o'clock this afternoon. Then the system starts to shift to the east, but then another round of rain comes up from the south. And so in those overnight hours, right around midnight, we could see more storm pockets pass through the valley as well, most likely the eastern and northern portions of the valley. 
staying in the 90s all weekend long and into that new work week. And then the triple digits do make their return on Tuesday. I'll show you how long the hundreds are going to be sticking around as we reach that first day of fall on Wednesday and the rest of that seven day coming up in just a little bit, Mark. No, hey, thank you. Turning our attention now to a big weekend for our Valley teams. Number 19 ASU heading to Provo to take on a number 23 BYU tonight. It's one of the weekend's biggest matchups and it should be a good one. ESPN's computers are giving both teams a 50 50 chance to win. Let's go ASU, but uh, it may be an away game. The Sun Devils, they are still going to be in their black team uniforms. Uh, they're going to be wearing black and gold. The game is an ESPN's prime time spot at 7 15 just a few hours from now. And I know those guys with uh, Coach Herm Edwards uh, at the, the head, they mm -hmm. are excited to get another one under their belt. I love me some Herm. I can't wait to see what he's got in store for mm -hmm. us the rest of this season. All right, while they're wearing all black, a few hours south and in-state matchup in Tucson, Arizona. We'll take on the Northern Arizona Lumberjacks tonight. The Wildcats have dropped their first two games this season against BYU and San Diego State, so they're really trying to make a comeback, and they're trying to snap a 14-game losing streak overall. The team's last win came on October 5th, 2019, Jeez, when they beat Colorado 30. <laughs> to 30, but I know those Wildcat fans aren't giving in just yet. ESPN says it's pretty likely to happen given Arizona a 94% chance to walk away with their first win today. So we are pulling for you guys as well. And don't forget ABC 15 is your home for college football today. We kick off your weekend in just a few hours from now at 9 a.m. Michigan State, they're going to be taking on Miami. Then Georgia Tech heads to number six Clemson at 1230. Uh, Clemson number six. Wow, they've gone down since last year. And we finish with a it. white out in Happy Valley. I'm sure you don't. <laughs> As Penn State takes on Auburn, it's going to be a fun day of uh, college football. Then stick with us, of course, after the games for our ABC 15 Sports Extra show, breaking down all of the action. We've seen them make a national appearance enough times in the championship. <laughs> time to, time to switch it up. So Clemson, I ain't mad at it. Ohio I ain't mad State, at it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. All right. It is also time to rise up Red Sea for the first time in almost two years. Fans will be packing State Farm Stadium once again. It all goes down tomorrow. And it's an exciting time for Cards fans because the team looked good during their week one game uh, when they won against Tennessee. For the Cards home opener against the Minnesota Vikings, kickoff is at 105 tomorrow. Yeah, and this is what I like, the pros. That's what I'm into. Now, if you are going to be going to the game, there are some changes to keep in mind. Make sure that your phone is charged because you're going to need it to scan your parking pass and then get access to your digital tickets on the Cardinals app. The stadium is now cashless, so have your debit and credit cards ready. All right, well, coming up, we've got new details in a desperate search. What we've learned so far overnight as the FBI looks into a missing person. We'll have that for you coming up. But first, TikTok stars and influencers are weighing in with financial advice. We're going to have the red flags that you need to look out for before you listen to them. That's coming up next. But we leave you with a gorgeous shot from Tempe Town Lake this morning. And look at that color that's coming in with the clouds. Gorgeous start to the day as they load up in the canoe there. Stay with us, Arizona. These days, TikTok has become the new YouTube if you want to go on social media and learn how to do something. But there's some advice floating around that has financial advisors cringing. So joining us this morning is Jake Gutman. He is the founder of Phoenix-based Rosevest Financial to help guide us through it. Hey, Jake, thanks for being with us. Happy to do it, Nolani. Good morning. So let's talk about one of these first ones. Uh, the FIRE movement is for everyone. FIRE standing for financial independence, retire early. Is that realistic? I would love to tell you yes, but the reality is for most Americans, this is not something we can do. Uh, you, when you watch something on social media that shows you this simple trick for getting to retirement by age 40, or this one thing that helps someone get to age 50 retirement, it's just not the case. Not everyone's in the same situation. And as much as I would love for that utopian idea to be a reality, we unfortunately know through statistics, through 
uh, you know, fiscal reporting, that these are not realities that 99% of America can do. Right. Have to recognize that advice is coming from people who became influencers and made money overnight. Uh, yes. Here's another one that sounds like a bad idea. Forget about 401ks and IRAs. You're right. That is a bad idea. Yeah. Um, the 401k space is something that has helped Americans across the country grow their wealth substantially. We typically look at people uh, using their homes as a big factor of their net worth. But if you take that out of the equation, boomers, for example, have the largest concentration of their worth in their 401ks and retirement plans than any other generation previously. Now, these are not things to take lightly. We have these tools for our employers, if you're self-employed, whatever it is, that can help you build wealth over time. And they're just not shiny enough for some people to want to pay attention to them. But the bottom line is they work and we need to be paying attention to them because historically we can see how it works. One thing I'm sure that sounds really appealing is a way to avoid paying taxes. So they're saying you can do that if you start an S corporation company. The bottom line is finding a good accountant is going to go a lot farther than you attempting to follow a sorry, teenager or whatever it might be on TikTok or Instagram that tells you how they are momentarily not paying taxes. And for all we know, they're not even doing so, right? But a good CPA is going to treat this in a way that most doctors would. Everyone is individual. We have different strategies. And unfortunately, as sexy as the idea is of not paying taxes, not typically a reality for most. And the last one, I feel like investing has become a very popular idea when you see people, again, suddenly hitting it rich overnight. But you're saying it's a bad idea to follow the investments of the rich and famous. You look at historical data and you look at the, let's say, the five largest stocks in the stock market, if you will. Those stocks for the 10 years prior to them becoming the five largest did extremely well. Each year, historically, they chugged up on average and had higher returns. However, if you bought those stocks in their highest years, the three, five, and 10 years following were the lowest, if not negative returns for those companies. So there is no one-stop shop for the perfect investment. These things, you are so much better off getting a professional that can help you with a broadly diversified portfolio that fits you, much like the doctor analogy previously, than trying to follow something that you see on TV or on Instagram or uh, TikTok. It just doesn't work that way. And so on that note, if people do want some professional advice, how can they get in touch with you? Sure. Yeah. The best way is my website, which is uh, rosevestfinancial.com. And we're happy to help. There's educational videos. I do economic updates, all sorts of fun stuff. Actual professionals giving you financial advice instead of someone while doing some sort of trendy dance. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> we really appreciate the guidance this morning. Happy to do it.